Oh, yeah. Forget the wetsuit. This is what sexiness looks like. Hello, welcome back to Regrowth. As you can see, I have, uh, I have a new outfit. This is, as far as I can tell, the most magical set of clothing that you can get. It offers a bit more. With all this on, my, on me, I can get my Void and Elementium Wands down to 61%. It's made out of a Sanguine Helmet and Bound Boots, Sanguine Boots. Both of these are made just running uh, Goggles of Reeling and Thaumium Boots through the Binding Ritual that you saw when we made our Bound Blade. I have these, these uh, Bewitched Robes which are made out of the regular Thaumaturge's robes with some Bewitched Fleece, which is processed in this little interesting device from Witching Gadgets, which is used to basically combine various types of string and nuggets and other things together. And finally, the Void Thaumaturge Leggings, which is a very high-level infusion, and this was an absolute pain to get all the Essentia for. Which is why I have all that crap cluttering up my inventory, and oh dear, the mine spiders. Wait, I don't want to damage this armor. Yeah, you didn't get to me in time. Not this time. I was prepared. Where the hell are they? They must, they must mostly be down in the maintenance corridor. They're in the air vents. Game over, man. No? Well, that was utterly weird. I think we're just going to have ghost spiders haunting us for a few minutes. Maybe I'll run away real quick and try and despawn them. I hear no spiders. So, yeah. As you can see, I tore down our old alchemical furnace. And I have a bunch of stuff in my inventory to start making a new one. I have a full eight alchemical furnaces. I have eight lava crystals to supply them all with fuel from our blood network. And I have this thing called an Essentia Reservoir. It is from the Eldritch tab. It is essentially a really big Essentia jar. Except instead of being limited to one type of Essentia, it can store a total of 256 Essentia across any number of types. So you can just, this is just going to be the end portion of this, God, these freaking, this is just going to be where it all ends up before a golem brings it out into our jars. So let's actually set that down first. And let's try and figure out how we're going to do this. So I'm going to set this down here. And the thing about essential reservoirs is you can only... Well, first of all, you can only interact with them via pipes or via uh, golems. You cannot fill them by hand with Essentia files. Not that I really do that much. So at the bottom here, I'm going to put an Essentia buffer. An Essentia buffer is essentially a really fancy tube that can hold um, just eight units of Essentia, but it can hold multiple types. And more importantly, if I go down... Getting into the maintenance quarter a little bit. If I go down a little bit and I put an arcane bellows on its bottom, which will be out of sight. Now this Essentia buffer is creating a tremendous amount of suction. In fact, it is actually creating more suction than the Essentia reservoir was. But we can control how its sides interact, I think, by shift right-clicking. Yeah, you see that's blue, which I think means that the suction from the reservoir will overpower it. And I think red will block all suction altogether, and then there's just blank. So we want it to be blue, I think. I think. So let's take the tubing out. Just like that. And I guess we're going to put... Furnace and Alembics over on the side here. 
Let's just test this real quick. Let me... Well, this crack sand will do. I should be able to just put in a piece of crack sand. And it should melt it down. And yep, the Essentia is ending up inside of this reservoir. So we can kind of... I'm just going to go too high on each side. Don't worry, the creaking is perfectly normal. It will only explode if I try and deconstruct it. Otherwise, we are perfectly safe from explosions, I assure you. Yes. It says so in the parts of the Thaumonomicon that I wrote, so it has to be true. <laughs> okay, now let's start to figure out our piping system. I have, of course, here an input chest where I will put things to be melted. And I'm going to put the logistical sorter on top of it so that I have access to it from the front. Because I'm going to have to program in new things all the freaking time. Okay, so let's take these transporter pipes... And let's put these just on the back, like that. Connect them up. Okay. And then we can start building the second layer. Just going to dupe and dupe and dupe and dupe and give them crystals and then I need to figure out how I'm going to do the tubing I think I'll just run it through over here I don't have enough tubing on me do I hmm. why isn't it connecting on that side Alembics have one side that does not connect, and it always seems to find its way to a tube somehow. There we go. Okay, are all the others connecting? I need to double check on that now. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, okay. Now let's just do a back here. And dupe. Okay. Two more liver crystals. And then I am going to need some more tubing, I think. I thought I'd had everything counted out correctly, but I guess I did not. Oh, and yes, I of course need to connect the logistical sorter to that. Yes. Okay, and of course, both of those Alembics look like they are placed with the non-connecting side facing inwards. <sighs> there we go. There, that's better. Okay, that's all connected, I think. Yes, 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 yes. Are you all crystalled up? Okay. Yeah, that looks like it is time for a test. So, I should be able to tell the logistical sorter to take an item stack of, I don't know, this. And I want a max size of one. Size, yes. And I'm going to tell it round robin on... And this should send items one at a time to each of these furnaces and melt it all down. And by spreading it out across all these furnaces, the slowest part of the processing, the melting of the purple goo, will be done in the widest parallel process. And so you see here, yeah, look how fast this reservoir is filling up. There we go. And they're all already done. So, um... I spent all my cracked sand. Let's just fill in some of that hole back there. 
And I believe that Essentia tubes are all compatible with um, microblocks. I built a few here to test it out. Yeah, these hollow ones. See? It fits over them just perfectly. Yeah. Okay. Now we just need to uh, get our golem friend back. Okay. And uh, let's test something. I don't think I need to actually give him his core, then pick him up. I think I, I think that just by right-clicking him on the Essential Reservoir, that should bind him to it even before. Yeah, see, he picked some. He picked that up. Okay, so give him his fancy little upgrade. You fill these. Neat. So, uh, yeah, let's let's try this out again. What's something that I'm low on? Um, I, I'm kind of pretty well stocked. I'm a bit low on Alienus, so let's get some Ender Pearls. This should also be a pretty good demonstration of how well it'll handle bulk compared to the older. Because Ender Pearls are loaded up with quite a bit of stuff. And this is far in excess of what I need. Oh well, who cares? I need to get into the post-scarcity mindset. So, Ender Pearls, one at a time, size, oh, there, zero, two, one, there, there we go. Now, melty, melty. Look at that go. Yeah. Okay. So I have myself a super melter. Oh, it's so creaky creaky. That is the sound of progress, my friends. Safe, sane progress. Okay. So, I am having a little bit of a problem with the flesh golems that we left off with. Oh yes, and also I built Jimmy a proper playpen over here. I have not quite fully decided on how it is going to operate yet. As you see down there, I have two flowers called Ranan Carpuses. Those flowers will take things that have been placed on the ground and they will reconstruct them. And I have him here with just three, um, uh, and yes, there is another thing of birch wood um, beneath the dirt block that the Ranan Carpus is sitting on. And that tells it to only place on birch wood. So only those birch wood things. Um, I found that sometimes Jimmy could be hurt by the iron block reconstructing in his face, like he would get caught inside it. I have been trying like hell to figure out a system that will keep him safe. And so far, this seems to be working the best, having three spots with only two of them filled. It sometimes still gets him, but those slabs also save him 90% of the time. He is still occasionally taking damage, though, so I occasionally need a new Jimmy. But this has been going for about 10 minutes, and I have a tiny amount of cobaltite dust. This is probably not the fastest nor the most efficient system, but I can just leave it going. It is chunk loaded. But yeah, no matter what I have tried, and I have tried freaking everything, I cannot get flesh golems to stay alive down here with the Well of Suffering. Um, it seems like when I walk away from it, the Ritual of Regeneration stops working. And the flesh golems with fezes do not quite heal fast enough to keep up with the Ritual of Suffering just on their own. So I have tried freaking everything. I have looked through all my settings. I've tried, in performance, I've tried turning lazy chunk loading off. I have tried, I downloaded a completely different chunk loader mod. I downloaded chicken chunks, which, this is a really good chunk loader that I've used with this system before, and it has worked in the past, so I know that it would not be the source of the problem. It did not work. They just eventually die. I tried coming up here, and 
I set up an Automagy Hourglass that would turn the Ritual of Suffering on and off and should allow the golems to regenerate naturally even without the Ritual of Regeneration. And it, I looked up the math for it. It is far in excess of what they should need. They still died. So, um, uh, yeah, for now, we do not have a working well of suffering. It's just not working. So, um, yeah. I'm going to have to do some research into what our options are for getting other mobs. Yes, you see, I, I had whole tons of runes of sacrifice built out, hoping to get more and more efficiency out of them. But with the golems dying off every 10 minutes, it just... Ugh. I could try and find some witch spawners. Witches are also very good blood slaves because they drink their own potions of regeneration. But of course, again, as soon as I leave this area, they will all die because apparently regeneration is screwing up with chunk loading for some reason. And I, th I think without a player nearby, they don't drink their potions anyway, and it eventually just wears off. If okay, there there are some means of spawning mobs like from a spawner even without a player nearby, like um what's it called? Well, there's the wrath cage from Forbidden Magic, but I think there's another thing too just in this pack. Is it in Gatamancy? I forget. Anyway, I could use a wrath cage from forbidden magic this is an essentia fueled spawner i can i can fuel it with various types of essentia it's going to vary depending on what type of mob is though i think it can always be fueled with ira and i think there's a couple of farmable sources of ira i have like um let's see ira yeah I can get it from fire charges, I can get it from creeper heads, and I can get it from uh, from ghast tears, all of which are things that I can farm up with, with magical crops essences. So I could set up an auto farm of that and pipe it in, have a small auto melter down there, powered by blood, of course, and that could pipe into it, but... I don't know. I don't know. I just get the feeling that... <sighs> if I set a system like that up, it's it might not work when I'm not around. I want something that keeps on supplying blood, whether it is chunk loaded or not, whether I am present or not. And with everything screwing up, I'm not sure if the wrath cages were going to work. Anyway, for right now, I've just made a couple more runes of self-sacrifice. and I've replaced... Uh, I'm, I'm gradually souping it up more and more. And I can just take my Thaumaturge's razor and I can feed it like 7,000 blood per poke and I can come by and dump a load of blood in the altar every so often. And that is good enough to keep just um, those lava crystals fed. Those are very, very cheap. And it, I'm, I'm probably... The thing is, I'm not going to be able to run rituals now, like Ritual of the Green Grove, which causes uh, plants to grow faster. Because blood magic rituals are very, very thirsty, and you need a constant feed source to keep them supplied. And... Uh, I don't know. I, I need to figure out a fix for that. Anyway, I'm sure you're all sick to your back teeth of blood magic, so today we will finally be getting into proper applied energistics. I have a big bunch of charge service cores, and I'm just going to put even more in there. You really can't have enough of this stuff. And I am just going to, uh, yeah. So let's take a stack of this and... I told you that this stuff is used to make fluix. Well, to make fluix, you take that, you take some redstone, and you are going to need to take some nether quartz. Just like 
So, now then, uh, let's get a little bit of ways from our... from this area, because that hopper hawk, huh? And I'm actually probably going to have to set this up in its own area, maybe, like, right over here. So, yeah. To make flukes, you just take those three ingredients and you chuck them into a bit of water. You see it'll spark up, and it'll popcorn into a bunch of fluix. Unnatural. Now let's just crush one stack of that. Oh, that's the sawmill. Now, fluix, we are going to need for a bunch of things, but right now what we need it for is the crystal growth accelerator because we do not want to wait an hour for pure freaking crystal. So we are going to need a Fluix block and we are going to need this Emmy glass cable slash Fluix. All that is just going to require a bit more quartz to play with. And actually, I think it's going to have to be done in a crusher. Uh, so yeah, let, let's look that up. So that quartz glass I know is going to require powdered quartz. It can be nether or certus. And that glass cable, that's going to require quartz fiber, which is more powdered quartz. And I just... Uh... Okay, that is going to take a little while to process. I will get back to you in a minute. To speed up the process a little bit, I have assembled this basic tier installer. You see it's just a bunch of parts. I had to make another rolling machine for these new tin plates. Yes. What this does is it upgrades a machine to a factory version. The way that Mechanism does mass processing in a compact space is, if I shift or click it, yes, you see now it's basic. It's a basic crushing factory. It's all kind of like that. Now, if I set it to auto sort, it's doing three at a time. And if I give it, it, it it'll take all the same upgrades, and I can give it speed and energy upgrades to make it even faster. The Next tiers of installers are just going to be the same thing. It's I think it's even all the same place. That's just steel and uh, yeah, it's it's basically all just rolling machine parts and things like that, along with increasing tiers of chipsets and stuff like that. But I think I should be happy with basic. Yeah. Okay, I've got a couple stacks of dust already. I've got some seeds made. I've got these growth accelerators assembled. Yes. Now, these things are used just by putting them over next to our little water bath here. And you see that I've run over some power cables and I have it on a switch because these things are constantly on so long as they have power and they are immense power pogs. Ah, I was kind of afraid of this. It seems that these things do not accept power cables. At least they don't from the top. They might accept from the bottom. But yeah. Usually with thermal expansion, they just accept cables straight from the top or bottom. Let's try running it down a few blocks and let's see if we can get it through in the bottom. Just to see. No, nope, it's not lighting up. Okay, well, I planned for this. Just run it on up. Okay. I built myself an energy acceptor. This thing is really simple. It's just some more of that quartz glass. It's basically the same recipe as the accelerator, just with um, slightly, yeah. Anyway, this thing will convert traditional RF into applied energistics power and it will essentially allow me to just hook everything on up over here. So I just need to get rid of these cables and I need to take out these fancy Fluix cables that I have. So it's just gonna go on down there, on down there, over, 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 over. Yep. And now if I hit that switch, 
Oop. You see, they all light up. I hit the switch again, they all let down. Now, these things will vastly, vastly, vastly increase the speed of our little water bath. I probably need a Solignolia down around here. I'm sneaking just for the moment. But they are enormous power hogs, like I said. In fact, I suspect we might not have enough power generation. These universal power cables store an enormous amount of power inside of them, but I suspect that once that runs down, we are going to start to see power brownouts. Anyway, let me just a dupe. Oh no. Oh, it looks like as long as they're in the water, my magnet doesn't work on them. That's interesting. Anyway, yeah, you see, just from that short little time, they're up to 18% already. So that is how we are going to get the pure Certus. Now, any crystal can be purified. Nether quartz can be ground up and purified. Uh, fluix can be ground and purified. Sometimes there is use for pure fluix. Let me see here. Like, I mean, a specific use that asks for it. But I think for the most part, the only one that you really need specifically is the pure certus, because you need that for some mechanical things. So I think that this should be the only thing that demands it. Anyway. Yeah. For right now, we can just do this by hand. We can turn this on only when it's in use. But later on, I'm definitely going to want to automate this. And I'm going to have to think of some way of... Because, like, it... okay, what is it going to take to get me a network tool to see how much this costs? That's, uh, I'm going to need some calculation processors. But trust me, these things are probably eating up more than a thousand RF per tick. Especially since in this pack, applied energistics was made three times more expensive on energy costs. So, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. And I can't see the amount of energy inside the cables. So that's unusual. Normally you can see that. I have to play with my Wayla settings. Okay, I've got me my pure Certus. Yes, lovely, lovely, lovely. Like I said, I think the main use for this stuff is just using it to make these Certus tubes, which I'm going to need a redstone for. And that should start to heat up. Okay. So, next up, I just need to get together some inscriber presses. These things are very, very simple. Yeah. All that we needed was the fluid crystal. But trust me, we are going to need lots of these vacuum tubes, so it was good that I set that up first. Okay, I'll get back to you in a little bit. All right, got the inscribers assembled. I'm going to start with just four of them. That should be enough to get me through, I think. So I've got tons of cable in my inventory. Need some logistical transporters. Yeah, ultimate, sure, why not? And I am going to need an input chest because I am just going to automate these things straight away. Yeah, I'm just going to go with a regular chest, I think. I don't need a really fancy one for this. Okay, so let's set this up. There are two things I'm going to need to consider. The first is that, well, each inscriber can only handle one thing at a time. So I'm just going to put the logistical transporter on the back. And the second is that it is very slot-dependent. It is very finicky about where it's going to let me input. Yeah, let's just do it right over here. So, I think I can just up and over. Let's set these things down. I think these should accept RF. Yep, there they go. Three, and we'll go one separately for the fourth, which will be the assembler. Yes, you see, uh, assembling a processor is a two-step process. First, we need to stamp the 
the thing itself, then we need to combine it with some redstone and some silicon, which I should actually get on crushing. Let us crush some silicon. Uh, we can get that just from sand in the crusher. Yep. Sand in the crusher. There it goes. Weird how it's not spreading properly, apparently. There we go. Oh yeah, and I might actually need a fifth one for the silicon. I forgot about that. Oh well, I'll, I'll deal with that in a second. I might do that on a separate line anyway. So, first thing, I am going to rotate these things around. Just to get them in a, yeah, like that. Because the slot that the processor parts are going to insert in is going to be this center slot here. Actually, if I'm going to do it like that, let me put the sorter like this. Yeah, that makes it a bit more convenient. So I can do that. And I'm going to run it on two lines, I think, so I can have each of these on three separate colors so I can sort it. So I'll have that on blue, that on green, and that on aqua. Okay, oh, yeah, dirt. And need to just connect them all up. Okay, that should work. And I should be able to take, for example, these diamond teen electron tubes. Oh yes, and I need to actually make the plates. That is easy enough. I just need these um, iron plates. And you just craft them with a chisel. And I hope my obsidian chisel will work. No, it does not. That's no problem. I should have some flint. There we go. So I'm going to need a silicon press. Going to need a calculation press. A engineering and a logic press and that is all I am going to need for the moment so let's put okay I guess let's put logic let's put calculation and let's put engineering so that would mean that engineering, which is the diamond ones, would go to aqua. So I'm just going to set the filter. I'm going to tell it diamantine electron tubes go to aqua with a max of one. Stack size, yes. And hopefully that should sort correctly. Let's test it out. Oh, I can't actually open the chest with a logistical sorter on top of it. Interesting. Okay, I'll make a uh, I'll make a fancy chest. Now we can put this one down, and it can actually open still. Okay. So there it goes. In it goes. And when it's done, get another one. Okay, that's sorting correctly. Now I just need the gold, and I need the well, that's that's the diamond again. And I need the Certus. Okay. Actually, yeah, I can just route these out to that chest, and then I'll have it even closer. Well, I'm going to have this in a different area. This is just a temporary staging area until I can get set up. Eventually, when I start building a proper ME system, I'm going to want to build a, uh, build a more proper base of operations, I think. Anyway, uh, which one was the logic? That's the logic. So, gold to dark blue. Max of one, size yes. There you go. And that would just leave the Certus on dark green. And there you go. Now, next up, 
I believe that these should all output out the front. And I'm going to put these, well, let, let's see here. Oh yeah, and I, I am going to need another inscriber press for silicon. I am going to in fact need that. So in fact, let's, let's make three of them for silicon. Just because that's something you need a crap ton of. And I think I'll have these arranged the same way. Rotate to your sides. Oops. Want it back on items mode. And you, I will set to, just for the sake of prettiness, let's disable that connection. I said, let's disable that connection. Do I have to do, that's weird. Yeah. Oh well. So, one, two, three, four. So silicon will go to dark red. And I need to make two more of those silicon presses. Ugh, I'm so close to having all this bullshit automated. I can taste it. Not 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 the bullshit. I can I can taste the crafting. Yeah, I can taste crafting. What do you know about my biology? Engineering, whatever. Can I get these facing inward? Mm. No, I'm just going to have to replace them, I think. Okay, facing... I said... Facing... Inward. No, not upward. Inward and inward. Gotcha. That way we can withdraw... Well, no, I want them facing outward anyway, because it's going to go to a different color. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Wasted all that time. Press. 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 Let's grab the silicon. Lovely, we have tons of it. And we are going to set that, new filter, item stack, silicon to dark red, and we're going to set it to round robin mode. Oh, and we need to set it to size one. Hello? Why you know? Oh, that's why you know. Okay, looks like it's all going. Excellent. Okay, so... All these three, I'm going to want this connection. Oh, I need to set it back to configurate items. I need to set this connection to no. And I think I just pulled out the silicon. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so I believe that silicon can go in either the top or bottom slot. Yeah. And the printed circuit goes in the center, doesn't it? No, it goes into the top or bottom slot, and it's red, and it's a chipset that goes into the center. Crap! Yeah, it's the chipsets in this one. So I'm going to need an inscriber for each of the things. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay, that can be done with colors. That is not a hard that is not a hard thing to fix. I just need more inscribers. That seems to be a theme. Okay, give me just a moment. Mm -hmm. I know I'm editing all this out. I'm just talking to myself at this point. It's kind of worrying how often I'm doing that these days, don't you think? I mean, I, I know that I'm I'm not exactly the most sane and stable person at the best of times, but I mean... <laughs> yeah. Just so long as the voices don't talk back. 
Wait, their voices, what else would they do? Did I just back sass myself? I think I did. Okay. And now it's gonna have to, they're gonna have to be separated, I think, because yeah, they're going, well, they're going to need to be separated farther than that, too. Hmm. No, that won't work either, damn it. Uh, okay, yeah. And then if I have the silicon withdrawing on... Let's see... No, I mean... Yeah, I'm gonna need to set all these to indigo, I think. Yeah, and then if I run that over... Okay, that puts the silicon in that slot. And then the back slot is going to need to be colored appropriately. And I'm going to need to have like a second layer underneath that or on top of that. I'm going to need some micro blocks covers, I think. Yeah, let's just prevent that connection. Try and reduce confusion. Actually, let's try and prevent this connection here, too. Oh, that's going to be hard. Mm, no, no way to do it, I think. Okay, okay, I think I figured it out. So, I've got all those ones down there outputting on different colors. And you notice that I use these cover facades to make this basically a separate mini pipe network. And these will all go to the bottoms of the machines down here. I'll have to use more micro blocks to separate them as I go, as I fill out down the line. I rerouted the insertion into, on, on, on this network, I ran it over the top over here. And you see it's coming down onto here, which this is purple. And I will just tell it that these gold chipsets will go to purple. Oh, and I need to tell it one at a time. And the indigo, the uh, the silicon, I just ran it underneath there, so it's doing its own thing. And I'll just make sure that stays separate. So uh, this is this is kind of a glorious clutch. <laughs> But it, I hope it'll work. So let's try this. Let's put in these. And let's put in these. And we should see. You know, it just occurs to me that I have no way of extracting. I could come out the top. I think I can extract out the top. But yeah, see, everything's coming into its into its uh, appropriate place. I just need to uh, get these get these gold ones out of my inventory. Okay, so can I extract at the top? I'm going to need a bunch more micro blocks covers because I want to try and separate out these networks as much as possible, just for the sake of my dwindling sanity. Okay, so, oh, and I need it back there. Oh, I had Tyrion microblocks covers in my, in my inventory. What am I doing? Okay, that's isolated. Now if I draw out... Yeah. 
And I'm going to just, like, I don't know, run it down a little bit. Oops. And I'll put the output chest, like, right here. Ah, and didn't I have a extra just vanilla style chest that failed? Yes, I did. Oh, except I'm going to have to make sure that goes into like the side or the back. There we go. Okay, and if I set that to extract, it does! Excellent, excellent, excellent! So now I just need to fill out the same pattern. So fill this out. Turn on side. And first step. That's okay. That can that can loop around. And so this one will be dark green. And that will be the that will be the certus ones. So extract. Yes, you see it finds its appropriate place. And then on this end, I need to bring this up and color this indigo. Oops. And that should route silicon in, yes. And I'm doing nothing special with the silicon for routing, ensuring that, like, I I'm just going to have to keep the system stocked with silicon so it keeps everything supplied. Because it has no way of knowing that a silicon is supposed to go to a gold or whatever. Okay, okay. And then on this end, I think this one will also end up... Be oh, I need to isolate that. I think this one will also end up being silicon just because, or also end up being indigo, just because that's the next color for the sorter. Yeah, but that's okay because they're separate networks. Okay, and then I just take these quartz chipsets that I cooked up, and I tell them on our main input sorter, that these are going to go to indigo. Size one, yes. And then I need to actually hook it up. I did actually hook it up. Why aren't you go? Why aren't you go? Okay. Oh, it must have been from that brief time when I, when I didn't have it properly. Uh oh, why did you extract? Where did you extract to? None of your pipes are set to extract. Oh, I see. You're just going into there. Okay. Ugh, crisis averted. Okay, and then I just need to isolate the top, and let's, I, I had it set to seared bricks, yes. And then we will be good. Yep. There we go. Calculation processors. Done. Now you can see that uh, I could technically do all this with Buildcraft, but um, but it would suck. Oh good lord, would it suck. Final inscriber. OK, 
Okay, that's silicon set. Okay, and this is going to have to be set to that. And that should do it. Yep, there's the diamonds coming on in. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to have to do that. Total isolation of the output line. Those. Sad. And that should do it. Yep. Okay, now I just need to sort the output line. This is one of the most kludgy pipe networks I have ever made. I kind of love it. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. I'm feeling it. I am feeling the spaghetti. Oh, yeah. Oh. Just drink it in. Okay, let's, let's run through this. From top to bottom, we have our input chest here. I put in here the electron tubes and the chipsets and silicon. I need to put in raw silicon as well, and I need to keep it supplied with tons and tons of raw silicon. I need to cook more. Anyway, I put all those input things in here, and this sorter does all the sorting. Buried in this mess are three separate networks of pipe, three separate layers of pipe, separated by these microblocks covers. And actually, kind of luckily, some of these sections, I just, because I randomly used Tyrion at first, it kind of is visually distinct. Anyway, we have what we would call the primary input line, which is everything being sent out by that logistical sorter. That runs over here, over the top. And that runs over um, here into the silicon. The silicon one isn't complex, but the top one is a little bit. Okay, so that goes down, providing the electron tubes to the first three inscribers. And it's also, you see I had to do a lot to isolate it, uh, being, it's, it's putting the chipsets into their appropriate slots in each of the final assembly assemblers, inscribers, whatever. Isolated from this input line is our final output line, completely uncolored. It's just all going out into this chest. Now, over, oh, we, we actually have, I think, four separate pipe networks because this silicon line coming out here is actually completely separate just by space. It's just drawing silicon from out of these silicon inscribers, sending it under the power line and over here into the assembly ones. Okay. Finally, on the inside track, we have the thing that is drawing the uh, print these printed circuits out and putting them in their appropriate assemblers. Yeah. So let's just uh, yeah let's let's give that a go. I should be able to give it like a ton of these and a couple of these, couple of those and a bunch of these, these, and these. I said these. And I already loaded that up with tons of silicon. And gradually, we should... Oh, I forgot to put that. Yeah. And see, that's loading up the electron tubes into these things that print them. And that is all outloading into these assemblies that are loading up the chipsets, the printed calculation circuit, and the silicon. And that's smushing them together into a fully printed circuit. And there's the logic one right there. 
And that is all coming out into this chest. Oh, boy. The only thing that's going to be more fun with a capital F-U, more fun than building this thing, is going to be building it all over again when I finally set up an applied energistics area proper. But oh, boy. It's beautiful. The madness. The madness. <laughs> I have been embraced by his noodly goodness. Good night, everybody.